with summer in full swing, we are reaping the rewards of lots of fresh produce, whether it's from the CSA program that we are a part of, the small amount of things that we have growing in our garden, or the things that we're buying from the store. But on Better Than I Deserve today, we are going to be back in the Harvest Right freeze dryer to freeze dry more food. And we've taken quite a bit of a break from it from our previous videos with the baking and cooking that we've been doing. We followed along with the process of taking sourdough starter from a bubbly active state to a freeze dried state, refeeding it and getting it to a freshly baked sourdough loaf. Or a video about taking the squash flour that we did and a variety of other things that we freeze dried over time to make a chocolate cake. But we will go ahead and move over to the freeze dryer to get it cooled down and I will show you what all the food looks like before it goes in today. As usual, it's going to be a little loud while the unit is cooling down, but here is all of our food going in. Our first tray here is eggplant and it's approximately one eggplant just sliced. I am not a very big eggplant fan, but leave it to the freeze dryer to force myself to try and see if I can make it into something that I do like. Most of my issues come with eggplant are the amount of moisture and texture. So my thought was taking all the moisture out and basically adding in moisture that I like in regards to cooking. So a butter, olive oil, or ghee, or something like that. And it might be a better texture that I like for recipes but um, we are trying that for the first time today. Above that is a tray with shared items of thyme and lemons. So our herb plants are doing really well. They are enjoying the massive heat that we're having, so I wanted to pluck some off before the plant got too far along. And the lemons, um, obviously we did not grow those, we bought these from the store, but we are trying two layers for the first time and I saw on Retired at 40, I believe, that channel, that um, he did this and they had a good outcome. So I wanted to get on as many as I could. And on the other end is more lemons just in different forms. So I have just the rind and then I have just the inside lemon. And then we have some small chunks that have lemon and rind and, of course, slices. My idea would be for cooking or adding to drinks, grinding up for lemon zest, things like that, that I don't usually have on hand, especially if we would run out. But I, I am very excited to see how that turns out, maybe even making lemonade, so we will see. Above that, we have our very infamous fruit going in. It was more of a plethora of things that we had left over as they were starting to become a little too ripe. So we have a few peaches, some giant raspberries, um, really good strawberries that we had, very sweet uh, pineapple. Of course, I'm excited about that. And our new item was a tomato that got a little beat up and bruised. So I went ahead and diced it and then did some slices for us to try. So I am very excited about that. And that would be good for adding to recipes, obviously, um, adding to guacamole and a, a myriad of other things it's pretty much endless and our final tray here are beets we did those before we did eat all of them it was not the easiest thing for me but we made it through and i plan on doing these and giving some to uh, friends and family that enjoy beets so we will go ahead and get these items in today and move over to the freeze dryer. As a reminder, if you're new to the channel, on the Harvest Rate freeze dryer screen, it tells you exactly what to do. So after we started our freeze dryer and it did its cool down, it now tells you to load the food into the freeze dryer and then close the drain valve before pressing continue. It's very, very easy to do this process. Our cycle is officially started. Like I said, the process is super simple. I've tried to capture it many times, but the camera just does not want to focus and it blurs it out too much. But on there, it tells you 
what to do, when to do it, and at that point you're just waiting for it to hit all of those different stages of freezing and then drying and then hopefully when the cycle says it's done, the food is completely moisture free as you need it. But as you can do on the screen, you can add more time to your liking if you find that something isn't enough or if you know that your cycle is coming to an end and you are not ready to process and package your food, you can add more time to it. It's a fantastic cycle that is truly wonderful and easy to do. But in the meantime, we are going to just check back tomorrow and see how everything turns out. It's the next day and our freeze dryer is signaling that it's done, but there's quite a bit of condensation on the front of the door this time. It's a cooler day outside, which is a nice break from the heat, but it is still very high humidity. So I'm sure that has something to do with it, but we will move over to the freeze dryer and open up that drain valve and get the food out probably one tray at a time, just so we aren't getting everything out while we're going through and packaging everything, just kind of how we did the last time. So let's check and see how it looks. all that moisture out of the way there and see all that it has there. We will start with the beets. So like I said we're going to be keeping the unit going while we do our packaging and we have our beautiful tray of beets out. I will try to make it a positive outcome for us here. But as usual, I will try it, even though I think that they taste like dirt. Nice and crunchy. A little sweeter this time it tastes like they are the same batch of beets that we had before, and as in like we got them all at the same time and I planned on trying to do some cooking with them or give them to people. But as a reminder, when I did these beets, um, I think it's pretty much standard practice for several different types of vegetables whether you are going to be freezing them for use later, or in our case, of course, freeze drying, you want to blanch your vegetables after you slice them. So just like last time, I used the food processor so I wouldn't get too stained and um, blanch these for about two minutes and then transfer them to cold water and then to the tray to freeze upstairs. And then we freeze dried them. So I have one of our saved containers. I'm loving saving all of these jars as we uh, come across them. Oh, don't know if my plan will work for keeping these all in here. From the experience I've had, make sure that the, if, you're, if you are using uh, recycled jars that they need to have some kind of rubber gasket on them. You can't use something that was not for liquid because obviously that's going to keep moisture out and be seal proof. That one is like so thin. It is actually like tissue paper. It's so pretty. It's like a rose petal. Our other jar. Let's see if we get lucky enough or if I need to put these all in different containers. Obviously my biggest concern is just getting them put away as quickly as possible so they don't take on moisture. Um, some of the ones, in another paper one, um, some of the ones that we had from before, uh, just from getting in and out of the pack, the container a lot, definitely took on a, quite a bit of moisture quickly so they were kind of crunchy, kind of not. So it probably would have been better to use a large port container but it's all right so like i said there's a gasket in there it might be too bright to capture it but um that is imperative to keep your things fresh and sealed just like this one a gasket this helped uh something with liquid both of them did one tray down and three more to go our next tray is our variety tray, our overflow tray as I've been calling it. it. has diced tomatoes and sliced tomatoes, which were our first time doing it, and they look and feel fantastic. Really light, very crazy. Um, some pineapple that we had left over that was just getting a little too ripe fast. 
strawberries, raspberries, and two slices of peaches. So I am not a big tomato fan, but for the sake of sampling, it's a very strong tomato flavor. Um, definitely a punch of flavor. It is very sweet, but it's that strong tomato flavor. If you like tomatoes, this is going to be right up your alley. It's, it's good, but not my favorite thing. Of course, I am always dying to try the pineapple. Very sweet and a little extra tangy. It's followed up with a strawberry, my favorite. It almost tastes like fake strawberry flavor. It's so strong. Raspberry. Mm, so good. Oh my gosh. It may have just been an underripe one, but um, I'll leave the peaches. Those are Filson's favorite. Um, but we'll probably package all the fruit together and keep the tomatoes separate. Um, hopefully, I have large enough containers for everything. The raspberries freeze-dried have probably ruined regular raspberries for me. I know I've talked a lot about that in the past. Um, it's just, you know, to me raspberries are kind of hit or miss when it comes to flavor and texture recently. So that's been a nice change of scene to have them freeze-dried. Hey, we even have a little bit of room left. <laughs> This jar is going to be too big for the tomatoes, but it was for tomato sauce, so, which still smells a little bit like tomato sauce. <laughs> I figured it would be a good combination. So we'll just put all of those in there together, and obviously I continue to think of ideas to use this for. Baking, and, or cooking more specifically, would be a good option, because obviously it will take on moisture from the juices that are in your food, or if you wanted to up an already cooked down tomato sauce and have extra tomato flavor. So there are our tomatoes. I'll go get our next tray out now. Here are the lemons and thyme. I was so excited for this. And thinking about it, this would be like a refreshing summer drink combination with thyme and lemon and water. That just sounds amazing. But you can smell it just a little bit. Um, but I am so excited about this. Obviously our thyme is nice and light and crunchy. The top lemons feel good. My biggest concern would be the bottom ones. So let's make sure our second layer is feeling good. Yes, I'd say they are it's just broken up. So those bottom ones might be sticking a little bit, but we'll deal with what we got. I have an old honey jar from years ago and I thought that would be a good size for the time obviously too big for it in total but um, until I start to run out of the previous herb containers that we had this is what we're dealing with so we'll get those in there oh my gosh it smells so good and I cannot wait to do some cooking with that and now we get to do our lemon I was just so excited to do these. They are so crisp and crunchy and I'm hoping that this just has a good turnout for us for, you know, uses that we have wanted to do. I'll reserve to try one for ones that break or don't do so well, which might be some of the bottom ones. I did try to de-seed these as best I could once I sliced them, just going through and making sure that there weren't seeds in there. So, you know, if we had the idea to grind them up or, you know, whatever we were going to do with it, I wanted to make sure we weren't getting any of the bitterness of the seed in there. So we got most of the majority of the slices in. It's a beautiful container. This container of lemons is just so pretty, like little sunshine in a jar. We'll get the other bits and pieces in. So the lemon without the peel. Now we have chunks of lemon and peel together. 
the last is just the peel. So my hopes are that we can grind that up at, you know, leisure to do lemon zest. And now we have all of our lemon in there. Obviously, I know that this is going to be a torturous process, but we are going to taste this. And I have a little bit of everything left on here. So we have just the lemon, this is the rind, and this is the lemon and the rind. We're gonna start small. It'll be the best amount of lemon flavor you've ever had. I have the goosebumps. Wow. I feel it in my scalp. Very, very strong lemon flavor. I'll take this over the ginger any day though. So, um, I definitely am probably not going to try these and I'll add these to our jar. But I do want to try the rind, mostly because it's a different part of the lemon, and I don't know if I've eaten just lemon zest before. Obviously, I think most of us have sucked on the lemon at some point, so. So, since that piece had a little bit of the lemon meat on it, it was just a little bit of tang. The rind itself, the peel, it was, lemon flavor without the sour but the bitterness of the peel um i'd say it's probably exactly how i expected that it was going to taste um but it is good i think that that would grind up really well for recipes or if you were just making something that re required the zest of lemon i think that, that would work well if you can just use the peels and grind them up that's so much easier so um, that was uh, a very good process, obviously very sour, but I am super stoked with how they turned out. So we will move on to our last and final tray. Our beautiful, not as white as they once were, eggplant, but the pieces feel nice and crisp, so I will turn off our unit. It's nice and quiet now, and I needed to run back upstairs to get a wide mouth jar since our eggplant wasn't fitting in to one of our small mouth jars. So we will get these packaged up and I'll try one in a little bit. So perfect. I was hoping that they would lay nice and flat. Some of them still a little on the chunky side. It's okay if some of them break. Hopefully not all of them. They're breaking very easily as you can see. Get our last few pieces in here save a one for trying. I don't know much about eggplant in regards to cooking with it. My experience is pretty limited, mostly because maybe we just haven't picked the best kind to have or if they've just been too watery or whatever. So using the CSA program that we do, I have good confidence that we are receiving top quality products and that this eggplant was picked um, at the perfect time so it's probably not going to get much better than this and obviously um, whether you're supposed to eat them or can eat them raw <clears throat> as in uncooked and fresh I'm hoping that's fine these were not processed aside from me just slicing them with a knife and putting them on these trays to go into the freezer before we freeze dried them so our family is Greek so there are lots of Greek dishes with eggplant but none that I really enjoy. So I've been trying to come up with ideas and freeze drying was gonna be the biggest one in my mind. Like I said earlier in the video, moisture and texture is a big thing when it comes to eggplant for myself and probably Brad. Um, I don't think Filson has ever tried eggplant, so I have high hopes that maybe this has a good flavor to it and he might like to eat them this way but I would like to do a dredging like through egg wash like with a crumb parmesan topping or something and do like an eggplant parmesan form because I think just too much moisture gets in it and then you get kind of a mushiness so I am going to go ahead and try it now the first piece I took 
literally just got stuck to my mouth so I took that out and I'm trying just the inside meat part first because I think it probably had to do with the outer circle, the skin. So it's taking on moisture pretty quickly. Once again, this does not shock me. You can kind of see instead of it snapping, it's slowly ripping. It doesn't have a ton of flavor. Let's try this one. It doesn't remind me of anything else. It doesn't even remind me of eggplant. So I really do not like it. I'm definitely not a fan of it just eating like this and like I said I really don't have experience to know if eggplant is okay to eat uh, fresh and just like slices without it being roasted or cooked or baked or whatever so um, maybe that's just not its intention but I still do want to try other methods of using it and um, I'm hoping that my idea of doing like an eggplant parmesan or maybe like a fried green tomato when when you can uh you know do those coatings and you know fry it up really fast with a nice aioli dip sauce or something but we will report back in a later video of how that process goes when we get around to it <laughs> well we have a another freeze drying cycle under our belt and I'm very happy with how our cycle and food turned out with our eggplant, lemons, multitude of fruit, tomatoes, beets, and thyme. I have no doubt we have lots of produce in our future and hopefully things that we have not tried yet. The CSA has been a great addition for us this year and is getting us out of our comfort zone with new things that we don't usually eat and obviously with our freeze dryer edition this year. Tons of things that we've never freeze dried. But if you like the content that you're seeing and you haven't subscribed to our channel, definitely do that and you will be notified when future videos are set to premiere our post. But we hope that you are having a great day and we will see you in the next video on Better Than I Deserve. Bye!